Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Dylan Henderson from Trinity University in Texas. Welcome, Coach. Yep, Dylan Har Harrison. Harrison. Harrison, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I play I played D3 in, at Catholic University in Washington DC and we had Trinity College across the street which was a small all girls school but uh, you, you you were the the big mighty Trinity down there in Texas um, I know that the football team was always really good when I was in school uh, but the soccer team is really good too especially on the women's side you guys uh, you've had a tremendous record while you're there um, so I'm guessing with with all that success you got a lot of hopefully you got a lot of recruits that are interested in playing there you know how many you know, inbound contacts would you say you're receiving from prospects in a in a given week? I know it ebbs and flows during the year, but but you know, average it out for me. Yeah, I, I would say very easily it's probably up to thirty, if not more. Um, and again, the unique part about it is obviously Texas is soccer heavy, uh, so we get a good chunk from Texas, but we're also recognized uh, across the country, so we're getting we're getting emails from all over the place and. You know, we, we actually try to do our homework and, and look into each and every one of them. Yeah, I mean, I noticed your roster, uh, you know, had you know, a lot of different states represented. Um, so in terms of the recruiting for you when you're going out to, to tournaments, you know, are, are you guys – well, what tournaments are you hitting that are kind of the, the must-have uh, for, for checking out players? Yeah, I mean, we, we go through our cycles, right? We go through the cycles of hitting all the big ones, um, you know, your big national ECNL, uh, even with now GA events. We've done all those. Uh, obviously, it's easy to get to events in Texas. Um, but every every so often, we'll try to go ahead and spring and get into some areas that maybe we haven't hit for a while, uh, whether it's, you know, Vegas, Arizona, uh, those areas. Haven't been up to the Northeast too much, to be completely honest. Um just the competition with so many schools like us up in that area, uh, it, it's hard to get people to come down. But that being said, uh, we got we got an incoming student from the D.C. area coming next year, so uh, it, it's doable. We just gotta find other ways to to get it seen. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned coming next year, so you know when are you usually starting to look at players really start that recruiting process so, you know what year are kids when you're when you're talking to them and starting to do that yeah it's 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 all over the board again um i think i think a good example of that is you know we're actually bringing in a transfer from uh d1 big 12 uh program and she was at our camp in eighth grade um you know but then the flip side too uh, we've had some students who have come here their, their second semester of their senior year, and we're finally just getting in front of them for the first time, and, and that's the, really the final time that we're going ahead and, and sealing the deal and, you know, them really loving the school and, and us being committed to them. Um, so we're, we're wide open. I think we've done a really good job of allowing the students to make the decision when they're ready, uh, and I think a good reflection of that is, you know, having students that come here, stay here, and play here for four years. So speaking of, you know, playing four years at the same place, how has the, the, the transfer portal affected you guys, if, if at all? Or, or are you looking at that as a recruiting tool? Yeah, just break it up a little bit, Matt. I'm sorry on that one. Can you oh. ask that again? Yeah. Are you guys looking at the transfer portal at all in your recruiting process? We, we, we do a little bit, and really, uh, for example, like I said, we, we've now had three transfers uh, the past two years, um, but the reality is every one of those we recruited in the original process, um, so it, was, it, it later came out that it was like, yeah, it was either between us or where they ended up, um, and so for them to have the chance to come back, uh, I will say credit to each and every one of those students was you know, how they handled that relationship, even letting us know that they were going to the other school was super important. Uh, you know, they're very professional about it. You knew that there was a genuine relationship and they're able to express that through a phone call, whatever level we were at. And so when they pop back in the portal or they reach back out to us, uh, that's that's uh, makes it easier for us to go ahead and now have those conversations again. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of what, what we about do, camps? but it's, it's more uh, based off fit? of... Yeah, it's more based off of students that we've already had contact with. Okay. 
sorry. Yeah, we're unfortunately we've got some sort of delay here. Uh, <laughs> um, in terms of uh, camps, do you guys do your own? Do you and your staff work at other people's camps? How do camps fit into your recruiting process overall? Yeah, we, we, we run our own. Uh, we actually have one coming up uh, that second weekend of August. Um, the, the good thing for that one is they're really going to get a glimpse of the university, uh, our coaching staff. We run all the sessions. Um, even we have some of our current players who are hired to, to kind of just answer questions that, you know, you really shouldn't even be asking coaches, uh, you know, the, the questions of, you know, what's my coaching style? I think they, they have a better idea of it than I could ever describe it. Um, so, yeah, so we have that and then we do, we do go out and work other camps, whether it's with some of the top clubs in Texas, um, that, that bring us in. Uh, even my assistant's done a really good job of working uh, University of New Mexico camp um, past few years. So, so we're open to going out, working the camps, and, and again, just finding different ways to see different players because we, we know that there's quality players out there that, that might be interested in a school like Trinity. So speaking of quality, you know, what, what are the qualities that, that you're looking for in a player, whether, you know, when you're watching them at a, at a tournament or at camps, you know, what's kind of that hierarchy of, of things you want in a player, either off the field or on the field. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Uh, I think two two kind of things with it. Um, you know, just the type of school that we are. Uh, we tell a lot of our recruits that don't come here to hide. Um, you're going to be known. Uh, you're going to be known in your classes by your name and everything like that. Uh, so that's that's the first one. You know, when we go out and watch games, we want to see the player that wants to be involved. Uh, you know, they don't have to be on the ball all the time. Uh, but just staying connected, staying involved in the game is a huge part. Uh, and then we've kind of even moved our model to to tough and technical. Um, and, and so we've been able to go ahead and really identify some players who have those attributes. You know, when we talk about tough, uh, it doesn't just mean, you know, strong as can be. Uh, it can be being a tough matchup speed-wise. It can mean just mentally tough, uh, the desire to win, to be competitive. Um, those are all attributes that we're looking for. Uh, and there's obviously different ways you can express that, uh, whether it be, you know, in your play, uh, your attitude, and us also doing the homework on the back end of talking to your coaches because they're working with you every day. Yeah, in terms of, of that, how, how much are you talking to, you know, club coaches and that either to find players or, or you know, one's contacted you and you're kind of doing your homework. Are, are you doing a lot of talking to club coaches? We're doing, we're doing more of it. Um, I think it's an area that we need to get into and, and just do, do absolutely more of it. Um, like I said, they're the ones that are spending most of their time uh, with their students. They're having conversations of what they're looking for, what interests them. Um, but yeah, where, where we really started to hit it is, okay, we've gotten a little bit further in the process with a, with a student. Um, and now we just want to find out some character things. Uh, you know, what, what is their work ethic like? What is their attitude if they come in and don't start right away? Um, and, and so I think we've done a better job of that. Uh, and then the other thing that we've really started to see, especially with the type of student that we recruit is these coaches are actually wanting to reach out on their behalf. And so we're having coaches call us before we even do that. And that just speaks so high of their character. And, you know, it, it lets us know, okay, like if the coach is willing to put their name out there on, on this, this player, that means that we're recruiting the right type of person. Okay. Well, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the thing that most parents want to talk about when it comes to college and that's finances. <laughs> um, obviously you, you don't have athletic money to give, but can you just give me, you know, I'm not, sticking you to hard numbers here or anything, but just give me an overall idea of what the financial aid and, and tuition situation is at Trinity for, let's say, an average incoming player. Yeah, I mean, it, and that's that's the thing. I don't think, uh, I don't think there is necessarily an average. Um, where I will say that we do a, probably a good job, if not better than most, is uh, I think even, even in some of the reports we've been awarded one of the top merit-based scholarship uh, offers out there. Um, the other thing is we're kind of operating very similar to the Ivies in regards to uh, meeting full financial need. Um, so it is an extra step. You know, I've been at the Division One side where we've been able to go ahead and offer those scholarships and do those types of things. Um, and it just makes it kind of easier and cleaner when it's coming from us. 
but it's well worth taking the extra step here, in my opinion. Um, you know, I will say that I don't think there's a single student on our team uh, that that's paying the full amount. It's it's just not it's not the way the school's built. Uh, we have an unbelievable endowment that allows us to go ahead and meet that full financial need, um, and, and so uh, yeah, don't don't get don't get taken back by the kind of the sticker price, I guess I would say. Um, but it, it does, you know, it does cost to, to go here. I mean, uh, that's, and again, that's what we talk about. Like, uh, it's not for everybody. Um, but if you're willing to take the steps, if you're a good student, uh, is, is a big part of it. You, you know, I'm, I'm saying that you might get all these things, but the very first thing is you, you have to be a good student who qualifies for those things, who have earn those things and then uh and then we can really kind of work through the process from there okay well let's let's shift gears talk a little, little bit more about the school you mentioned the endowment but you know in terms of uh you know there's there's a few trinities out there uh but what is it uh about your school that that's, that's kind of awesome that sticks out that you know maybe i'm not going to learn about just by clicking around the website yeah i, th I think i think that's a that's a great one um I still think, and, and again, Matt, just just full disclosure, like I'm biased. Uh, I, I went to school here. Um, I went to school here, played here. Now I've been coaching here. Uh, I think I think it's unbelievable. Uh, and what I think it has that kind of that great mix of is we're we're on a campus that's that's a really kind of unique uh, living and learning environment in the middle of a major city. Um, so during the week, you know, we have a three-year requirement to live on campus. Uh, during the week, you, you're you're here, you're a student. Um, but if you do have the weekend off, uh, we we have an unbelievable city that just celebrated over 300 years of culture, uh, and, and so that's right there at your doorstep. Um, you know, just the ease of getting in and out, uh, the, the desire to have people come visit you. Uh, you know, it, it's easy to get families to come visit if if you wanna if you wanna go to school here. Um, so I think, I think just where we're located, what we offer and still having, you know, access to a major city right at your doorstep is, is pretty unique, especially for the type of liberal arts school that we are. That's awesome. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, there's like three cities on my list in America that I still haven't yet visited and San Antonio is definitely one of them. Um, in terms of you know, the academic side of things, how is it that, you know, your student athletes really balance their studies and sport commitments and, and what kind of support uh, mechanisms does Trinity provide? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it even starts with, um, you know, our academic council looking at missed class. Um, I'll be honest, uh, we, we have a, we track our five year trend of how much class we're missing every year. Uh, the good part is um, our scheduling allows for us to get out, take big trips, travel, you know, kind of live that live that lifestyle. But once we get in the conference, there's a lot of things that are near and close. Um, so, so we're able to go ahead and, you know, see different parts of the country. Uh, we went to New York last year. We're going up to St. Louis next year. Um, so we get to do those types of things. But it's all really coming at the expense of, I think our average is right around four to five days of missed class throughout the whole year. Um, I was doing that two weeks of a season at D1, you know, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, then when you pile that on with, like we were talking about earlier, having a relationship with your professors that they know who you are, they know that you're here for the right reasons, um, our, our team has earned the right uh, by the amount of work and, and that they put into it and the reputation that they have of, of being like true student athletes that they have these really great working relationships with the professors that they manage it. Um, and they manage it everywhere from doing the work ahead of time to uh, doing it on the road to, hey, get it done when you come back. Uh, I, I had a unique one in, I'll be honest, my first year here of uh, coaching in, in my 18 years of coaching now, uh, a professor gave me the test to proctor with one of our students. Um, and, and so on the road and we had a block of time and like, okay, have the student take this test. When you get back, just bring it back. I joke because I think the professor knew that I couldn't help him with the test even if I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I think they, they probably looked at my student records from when I was back back in school. And no, But I, I really believe that, honestly, they knew the level of work that that student can do. 
And so there's not going to be any surprises on it. Um, and, it and it was at an NCAA tournament game because, uh, I mean, you figure out that, hey, you, you have to fly who knows where within a matter of two days. And, and so right. uh, just, just having those working relationships, being conscious about how much class we miss. And it's, a, it's the focus of our students, you know, their, their desires to come here, get an amazing education in four years, if not less. Uh, so they're putting in the work on the front end and, and getting it done. I got I got to give them all the credit. They're they're way better students than I ever was, uh, and and I love them for that. No, that's great. Well, you know, you mentioned that you know your schedule allows for not a lot of missed days. So can you can you walk me through what a a typical week might look like uh, for your team during the season in terms of when's practice, when are classes. What is you know what days or games usually on and when do you leave that kind of sort of thing? Yeah, so so our typical week is we usually play Friday Sunday. Um, we we started it and it's kind of new and we've actually really enjoyed it. Uh, we actually train Monday morning, um, early in the morning. Uh, our our day off is usually Tuesdays. Train again, again early Wednesday morning, uh, late Thursday evening. Play Friday, recovery Saturday. Play Sunday. Uh, so it's just kind of rinse, wash, repeat. Um, wh where we set it up and, and what's been kind of unique is, you know, those early morning trainings have allowed us to, first off, uh, I know you haven't been here, Matt, but like it does, it, it gets hot here. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to deny it, uh, but that's I'm also, in Florida, so I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, getting, getting out early in the morning is to help us avoid the heat, it help us avoid some of that drain throughout the week. Um, the other part is, we're not telling a single one of our students that you can't take this class because we're training at this time, right? So they're able to load up. They're able to load up and take exactly the classes they need when they need them. Um, and, and it's allowed them to go ahead and, like I said, graduate. Uh, we have a, it's pretty, pretty astonishing. Like we have a few students who are going to graduate in three and a half years. Um, we have students who graduate in three years and it's because Again, they're able to take the classes they need uh, and, and get it done. Um, I know they've also enjoyed it where, you know, they are able to have the rest of the day. The rest of the day is theirs, uh, you know, so they're, they're walking out of here feeling good about what they've already done in the morning, uh, ready to tackle classes, get after it, and, and still have a, a bit of a college life past our, past our soccer side. Uh, don't, don't, I guess the one thing I will say within that is like, the, they're here to be successful on, on the soccer field as well, right? We, we don't think that you have to sacrifice either one of them. Uh, the academics is, we have high expectations, just as high as we do on the soccer side. And, and they've done a great job of finding ways to balance that. That's great. Well, well, let's talk a little bit more about the soccer side. Um, you know, is there a, is there a roster size that you aim to hit every season? No, I mean, we, we don't, we don't have a set number. Uh, there's, there's, I mean, our, our, our acceptance rate and how many people we're apply, having applied to school, uh, allows us to go ahead and just really recruit the athletes that, that we know can help us. Um, I will say we have a certain number of lockers in our locker room and we're never going to make anybody share. So it's kind of a good way, uh, that number is 32. It's kind of a good way for me to say, okay, like that's kind of the top end. Um. But even the past years, like if, if we don't have somebody that we think can really come in and bring something different to our team, um, add to our team, we don't have to hit that number. I think so even last year we rolled in with 28, 29, um, depending on the number of goalkeepers we carry. Uh, but, I mean, we, we've gone as low as um, I think 24 one year. Um, and so we do like to have the numbers in terms of you know being able to do things at training in terms of 11 v 11 uh, in terms of again uh, looking at how do we stay as healthy as possible and and also playing our best uh our best soccer at the end of uh october going into november um so load management is a big part of it um and and we also look at those things within our team and not just having the numbers but having quality across all the numbers is a big part of it right not having there's really there's really no drop off uh when, whenever we're picking starting lineups it's more based off of consistency and and who's going to help us be the most successful in that game that day okay what about the your staff you know what's the size of your staff what roles does everybody play what kind of support staff do you have like maybe within the athletic department 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're fortunate. Um, you know, again, uh, I have a full-time assistant. Uh, our, our, uh, our relationship's a little funny in the fact that she actually played for me um, at the Division One school. Uh, she holds all the scoring records at that university. Um, so we're, we're going on 10 years, uh, which is a little scary. The team doesn't know how to take that. They're like, our relationship's a little different. They're like, well, you guys are just kind of the same person, which we're not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but they just think we are because of our relationship. So having Coach Spencer, uh, she, she does an amazing job. Um, like I said, she comes from the attacking side, so her focus is usually geared towards that, recruiting and everything. That's that's just naturally where her eyes drawn. So she takes on a lot of those responsibilities. Uh, we have part-time coaches, uh, whether it's, you know, bringing in somebody from the outside who, who kind of gives us just a fresh look. Um, and then also we've been fortunate, too, to hire uh, – we're bringing in a goalkeeper coach as well. Um, so we, we have access to an amazing coaching staff. And then, like you also talked about, the other staff, a full-time strength and conditioning coach that works with our team, a full-time athletic trainer that travels with our team and works just with our team, um, not to mention, you know, the amazing job that our SIDs do. Uh, just just across the board, we're, we're fortunate. Um, I, I don't know any other way to put it. Uh, like I said, I've been at Division One programs uh, that – don't have what we have um and so but you know like everything uh when you have all those things uh they can they can demand and expect things of you and so we we don't hide from that as well right you know we, we tell our students that you're coming here and you're gonna have access to all these types of things so don't be surprised that we're expected to to win and and do do the things that are that are that we all value as well of, in terms of really putting our best selves out there Well, I think, uh, you know, I, I think it's evident in, in the record, uh, you know, if, if people, if you, if you don't know about Trinity University women's soccer, you just look up the record. I think uh, I'm reading your, the bio on the website, which I think may be a year old, uh, has you as 86, nine and two over the last five seasons with an undefeated 55 and 0 mark in conference. So I think uh, your girls have been up to the challenge, uh, you know, with, with great, with great, uh, uh, what is it? With great power comes great responsibility as, yeah. as the Spider-Man says. So I think your, your girls are hanging on to it. Um, yeah, and we, 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 I think everybody knows that and has that in the back of their mind. But that's not even what we train for. Um, I mean, it, it really isn't. It's about, uh, you know, how, how do we become better that day um, and, and let everything else kind of take care of itself. I think it, at one point, if we got too caught up in it, uh, it can be daunting, right? You know, the idea of, hey, we don't want to be the first one to, to do a certain thing, right? And, and right. so and that, that goes across, I mean, you look at all of our sports here, right? We, we have expectations, but at the end of the day, it's the idea of, how do we keep getting better uh, and let everything else kind of take care of itself? Well, I, I I won't ask you to describe your style of coaching since you said already you don't you don't want to talk about that. But instead, I'll ask you how would you describe your team style of play and the culture of the team? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I think I think the the style kind of has remained pretty constant throughout even even the previous coaches, to be honest. Uh, the style is front foot. Um, the style is, yeah, we want to keep the ball, but it's with the purpose of banging home goals. Uh, you know, we want to be the one that, that, you know, puts the pressure. Um, we want to, we realize that, you know, even if you look at the, the probability and the statistics, you know, you need so many chances in a game to guarantee a goal. Uh, and so the only way we can almost kind of tell ourselves that we're guaranteed to score is, by creating so many chances, right? And, and so we have to put ourselves in those positions and do those types of things. Um, and, and, and the reason I think that, that styles kind of remain the same is, you know, when we when we have even alumni games and they come back and, you know, we have an alumni game that, that's 1-1 one, one, uh, after 90 minutes of play, which should never happen. In, in all honesty, <laughs> it, it should be a absolute scoring fest. But the fact that, you know, even those players who are returning back, you know, play the same way, play the same style and have the same mentality without even, you know, being around each other or even playing with each other ever. Uh, and to see it kind of match up, even in those moments, you could tell that like, that's been pretty constant throughout the, 
the, the years here. Um, yeah, so I think, I think front foot, um, you know, just really defensive, like conscious about, you know, winning the ball back all over the field. Um, you know, I think, I think it's a big part and, and just being organized and priding ourselves and, you know, having the shutouts, but scoring goals is, is a big part of it. Well, coach, I appreciate all your time. You've given us a lot of good info and I always like to end these, uh, the same way. And that's what didn't we cover? What, what didn't we get to talk about? Whether it's about the school, about the team, about your recruiting, uh, anything you want to tell potential recruits about the process, you name it, this is your chance to kind of wrap it up on on any note you want yeah i mean i I think i think probably the one thing that maybe we we don't do a good enough job is just just bragging on the types of of students that we have um and what i mean by that is you know they share they share a sense of values that that not only do i believe in that they each believe in and they live up to them each and every day and you know, um, I, I'm, I'm just surrounded, and, and I think that's what, why I'm still excited after 20 years of coaching. Uh, I'm just surrounded by amazing people who who are really just finding their way and, and doing amazing things uh, before they even realize it. Um, and, and so, I, again, I just an opportunity for me to thank them, uh, thank them for who they are and, and what they mean to me, my family, and, and everything that they've given us. Um, because the reality is without them, we're, we're not much. Uh, and so, you know, if you want to be a part of something, what I think is special, um, you know, if you want to be a part of, you know, uh, being held accountable and in, in a great setting, um, reach out. I mean, we're, we're here. Uh, you're going to be surrounded by some pretty, pretty awesome teammates. Uh, and, and they've worked hard at being great teammates, just like they've worked hard at being great soccer players. So uh, I just want to thank them again. Awesome. Well, coach, I appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck this season. Hopefully you can uh, bring home the natty this year and, and keep that success you guys have had. And, and we wish you nothing but the best. I think, thank you for all your time, Matt. I appreciate it. I really value what you're doing, you know, giving people a, a platform to kind of look at. Uh, I know you and I went up in this, grew up in the same era where, you know, we had to look in one book uh, to see if they even had programs. So it, it can right. be over, overwhelming the information that, that's out there. So to, to have a good, clean way to present it, I, I think this is awesome what you're doing, Matt. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Dylan.